back here with another tutorial. This time around, we're going to be starting off with, well, making our tires turn. And then we're going to jump right into basically cleaning up our network cars, or at least the, the prefabs that our network players are spawning on our end so that they behave and look a little bit better. That said, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my car prefab. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in the scene. We'll zoom in on it. And we'll bring it up. And let's look at the hierarchy for a second here. Now, a couple of people did point out in the last video, I accidentally put my left wheel in both of these. Uh, thanks for pointing it out. I fixed it. The car does handle better now. <laughs> All right. So if we go ahead and look underneath the wheel, I have tire. Now, remember when I was setting this up, I specifically named all of them tire. And that's going to come into play in our next uh, next part. And that's making these tires rotate side to side as your car turns. And we're going to be doing that in the wheel script. So let's go ahead. We'll jump into the wheel script. And up at the top here, right before we have our wheel collider, I'm going to go ahead and, well, we could make it public and just drag the wheel up there. But we'll, we'll just start off by making a transform variable. And I'm just going to call it tire. Now, I can't imagine that we'll ever need access to this tire outside of this script. And normally, I just leave it private. But I, I do want to have it in the inspector in case you just want to you know, drag and drop these things in. Some people are going to want that. But for people that are coming from a, a programming background and you want to stick to that OOP paradigm, I've talked about this before in previous videos and on the live stream. There's something we can do called serialized field. And what we're doing here is keeping it private. And if I go ahead and save it and come over and grab a wheel, it still shows up even though it's private. So we can actually come in and just drag it in if we want. And I think it's actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and actually fill this out. And of course, if you look, since it's on all of our wheels, it'll show up on all of them. And what I'm going to do is come into the awake and just say tire is equal to. And then what we're going to want to do is transform, basically getting our transform. I'm going to do dot find child. Now, if we look here, it takes a string, which is the name of what we're looking for. So you're going to want to make sure that you spelt this right. And I'm going to come up here and make a private constant. Just in case you ever want to change this. And I'm just going to call it tire name. And I like my constants to be capitalized. And I believe that's exactly what I called mine. Quick double check. Tire. Great. Then I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here. And we'll leave that space there. So that should grab it and self-populate. Now, if you don't want to do it that way or you're having trouble for some reason, you do have the option of, like I said, just grabbing the tire, dragging and dropping it in. But let's go ahead and see what happens here. So we'll go ahead, we'll hit start. Hmm. Um, I don't think we did anything here. We'll, we'll look at the car that spawns. We'll just go ahead, we'll leave this one off. We'll go ahead, we'll start it. There's gonna be a car that spawns in for us. The clone, we'll go ahead, just look at it. Come down to the front axle, we'll look at the wheel. And sure enough, it grabbed it. And it should have grabbed it for all of them. Great, now let's start working on making it rotate according to uh, how we have it set up as far as turning goes. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm trying to think, I don't need the car anymore. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here though, disabled, in case I do want to make changes. I'm going to come back into my wheel script and let's go down here to the turn. As you can see here, this is the value that we want to basically turn our steering angle at. And we're getting this value from our motor script currently. I guess technically we should pass that down maybe. Well, we don't have, well, we do have sway bars on our axle. I'm trying to think if I want the, uh, we are referencing them here. It would be kind of nice for the motor to not be connected to the wheels now and just be connected to, I guess, an axle script and the axle script 
want to keep references here. So we're going to have to keep, basically we're keeping references here and references here to the exact same thing. And we don't need to do that. And we're going to want to clean that up eventually, but maybe we'll save that for a later video. We're just going to come down here and take a look. Right here is where we're calling the turn. And as you can see, I have mine as just front wheel steering instead of rear wheel steering or all wheel steering. So this is where it's called. And of course, it just passes in the turn speed. And turn speed is right here. It's what we're getting the horizontal axis passed in multiplied by our turn power. So we can just come into wheel. And let's just go ahead and actually rotate our, our tire. So since we already have a reference to tire up here, we can just grab a hat, go ahead and grab that. And what I like to do is rotate around the local axis, but using its Euler angles, as I find them a little easier to understand. So we're going to say local Euler angles, and that takes a vector three. If you're not sure, when you hit the dot, before you hit enter, go ahead and take a look here. As you see, it takes a vector three, a getter and a setter. So we're going to go ahead and set up a new vector three, and I'm going to leave that empty for now. And what I want to do is come back into our game. Go ahead, activate our car. Come on. Go ahead, take a look at it. Grab any one of the tires, and let's just take a look at it. Now, when our car is steering, we want it to turn you know, left and right. So we want to turn on this green axis. And if we take a look here, that's the Y. So we know this is the one we want to steer on. Now, if we also take a look, we automatically have a 90 degree rotation on Z, and we're gonna to wanna to carry that over every frame as well. And on the X axis, we don't want it to move at all. Whoops, <laughs> let's leave that tire there. We don't want it to move at all. So keep the X at zero, steer on Y, and keep our 90 from the Z. So let's jump back in, put those values in, so zero on X, on Y, we're just gonna grab our steering angle here. We'll go ahead and post that in, and let's keep our 90 that we have on uh, Z, and just to keep formatting the same, there we go. So let's go ahead and we'll jump in, back into Unity, make sure we saved it, yep. No error, so we're gonna go ahead and start this up. I'm gonna shrink down our car that we're keeping up here. Let's go find the one we have here. Let's get a position nice so we can see the tires. And let's follow. And as we can see, the tires are turning with the steering angle now. Sweet. Room. Now we'll get into rotation a little bit later as far as making the tires turn and when you move. I don't have a graphic that you can easily see that on, so we'll, we'll play with that later. But we have the tires turning as we steer, and of course that's completely turned by steer power. If you crank this up to say like 50, and you turn, you'll notice you get a much sharper turn first off. There you go. And, well the angle's different. It's gonna depend on really on what kind of car you're creating. Maybe you want a 10 degree turn, 25. I don't know what the average automobile turning degree is. I'm pretty sure it's more than 10, but season to your taste. But now that that's done, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the things we're gonna to have to change around as far as the network player goes. All right, so I'm gonna come up to Unity, build settings. Uh, I'm gonna build the Mac version, uh, development build, that's fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead, build it. We'll go ahead, we'll throw it on my desktop, VVR. And I just want to be able to see uh, the player driving around in our scene. All righty, we're back after my recording software crashed. So we're going to go ahead and start up our remote client. And I want it to be small because I want it to be able to fit on the screen window. It doesn't really matter what quality setting we pick. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And as we can see, we are here. And I'm going to move forward just a bit. I'm going to move it off while we start here. And we should be down here. Alrighty. Uh, I don't want to, I want to get this one fairly stationary. I have to put in some handbrakes 
I think, or a braking system so that we can actually come to a stop. And that's not hard. That's one of the other things we'll do. But there's a few things I want to play around with here. If we take a look, we're kind of choppy, aren't we? If we notice over the network. And depending on your latency, you'll be less and less choppy. As we can see here, that's something we can fix with lerping. And we're going to be getting to that probably in the next video. But there's a lot of things on here as well that we don't need. There's a lot of physics involved here. So let me move this off to the side. Uh, which one's us? We'll disable this one. Okay, we're the bottom one. That disables the camera. So this is the other car. And if we were to go ahead and take a look at this, uh, we don't really need a whole lot of their physics running on our machine as far as being a remote client goes. On their machine, we want to keep it enabled. So as they perform certain stunts or whatnot on their system, uh, it'll just update over the network and tell us how to position their car as far as rotation and position goes. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of things here that as far as remote player goes, we don't need. Like we can turn gravity off. We don't need them affected by gravity on our end because it's their end that we're getting the information from. And let me see what else are we going to be able to do here. I'm just making a note here at the end of this video so I know what to jump into in the next video. I'll come down. There won't be anything in the window. Nothing on the body. Center of mass. We're going to leave that way. Uh, the front axle. Again, we can just turn this script off. We're not actually going to need it. To be honest, it would be great if we could just turn this whole thing off. There's no point in having this game object even here on a network player. And again, for the front wheel, there's nothing here we need on a remote player for this. So uh, we can't turn our script off. Uh, let me go ahead. I don't think we even have anything like an update in here. No, we don't. Uh, but again, it would be nice just to get rid of it. Uh, we do want to keep the tire though. So this is where we might want to start looking at possibly creating a new prefab that doesn't have any of this other stuff in it. It's just the basic car with the wheel. Um, then again, if we keep the wheel, uh, we can keep our. We won't have to send over the network as far as the position of the wheel and the rotation of the wheel. Uh, we can just have this updated automatically. I think I like that idea better. The less we have to send over the network, the better. So maybe we'll actually keep this. Uh, we don't want the collider though. So let me take a look here. We are getting the collider. Uh, and this is completely based off of our steer steering angle off the collider. So I guess for now we're gonna leave this system in place. I was kind of hoping to actually get rid of that wheel collider on the re remote people. Um, actually, I really do want to get rid of it. So what I might do is just have some fake variables come across on the, the network. Because we don't want it. If you get more and more people on the same game playing, that's a lot of network traffic that we could save and not have to send. But I guess that's something we can look at in future videos. Uh, likewise, rear axle, we got four more tires there. And of course, if your vehicle has more than four tires, that can start to add up pretty quick. But for the next video, let's make sure we take care of it being choppy. Uh, where's the network player? Right here. So we'll take care of some of the choppiness. As we'll see here as we zip around in the front. And that's the gravity. Because as you see, it's really smooth on mine. Um, let me go up here. Did I turn off the gravity? I did turn off gravity. I wonder if that's the wheel colliders making it bounce. I'll, I'll do a little bit of testing off camera. Because something tells me that's actually the, the wheel colliders. Let me see if I turn those off. What happens? I know our tires won't turn anymore. So we'll go ahead, zip back in. I am modifying the right one, right? 
Uh, doesn't seem to be balancing as bad. It still has, well, actually, yeah, maybe it is. Well, we're going to work on, first up, the the lag as far as making it lerp. And then we'll go from there. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.